Hello and welcome back to this the live stream coming to you from the Sydney International Piano Competition 2023. And I have a very special guest on my sofa again this morning. We have Ian Lucas, who's been the winner of a very special competition here in Australia for over 30 year olds. It's called the Music or Piano Lovers Competition. And he's won it or got uh, placement twi twice, two, two years in a row when that was happening. Ian, welcome. Thank to you. this program. You, ha you had this very special position this year at this competition because you were invited to play a little recital before everybody else was performing today. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. thanks for inviting me, Brendan. Thank you. Uh, yes, look, it's, um, it was indeed um, a an honour and a privilege to, to, to play for those uh, in the competition. And, um, and I, I guess the, the, the performance was a combination of, of the competition that you, you, you just referred to when um, the, the, the prize was participation. And I followed the, the Sydney International Piano Competitions since 1977. Oh, goodness and I, me. And yeah. I know all the winners and pretty well what they played. Ah. So to actually be a part of it in any way I could be, um, it, it's a highlight for me, a, a wonderful highlight, yes. I can imagine, but let's go back even further because your first piano lessons were with your mum, right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about mum. She must have been um, a pretty special musician Look, she was. She was a really. Um, there's a bit of a, a lineage because her mother was uh, a quite a substantial musician. She taught singing and piano, and that was through the depression. And she was good enough to sustain the family in the depression as a music teacher. Wow. And my mother's brother George, um, he was quite a, a celebrity pianist too. My mother was a good pianist, but very understated but a fabulously patient woman. <laughs> and that was demonstrated with her patience with me because she <laughs> was clearly my most patient teacher. I had two or three teachers in my life, but <laughs> none of them showed her dedication <laughs> and patience. Uh, that's rather nice. You obviously stuck at it for a long time and you actually went off to study for a while in, in Tasmanian Conser at the yeah. Tasmanian Conservatorium. Yeah. I, st I, st look, I, did, I started when I was, I suppose, four or five just under the guidance of my mother, and she, mm. she took me through to, I suppose, an intermediate level, and I was sort of an underperforming intermediate pianist, and so she got me a teacher who sort of, um, they started to whip me into shape, I suppose you could say, and I grew to love music to a degree where I, if I wasn't practicing, I was thinking about it, and mm. I did eventually um, uh, enter the, the Tasmania Conservatorium when I was, I think I was 17 or so, but I only lasted a year um, mm. for, for whatever reasons um, and I pursued other interests since. But if I wasn't playing, I was always thinking about playing. It's mm. it quite funny. It was a preoccupation with me, for, uh, even today. Yeah, yeah see, you know, there are, there are different ways of being a musician. Some people are professional, of course, are busy with it in a, on a professional level, but a lot of people are these dedicated amateurs and, you know, amateur meaning someone who does it for the love of music. Yes. And that makes you being able to not only play, but also listen to music differently. And music becomes a very important part of your life, doesn't it? Yes, it is. It's, it's an interesting point you make because regardless of your level, um, there is, a, is a, a place for you in music. I mean, Maestro Lane, the, the, uh, the uh, artistic yes, director, yeah, he, uh, the most wonderful player. Uh, we, are, we can't all play like him, but those who play are less, they can still play to others and play in, um, to the elderly or even teach. Hmm. Uh, so regardless of your level, there's a, there's a place for you in music. I think uh, uh, unlike many professions where if you're not on, on the top of the, the list, uh, you, you tend to struggle a bit. That's true. That's very true. But you, of course, went then to literally up in your profession because you became a pilot, didn't you? I did. And you worked for 30 years yes. as an aviation pilot, or important places like the Flying Doctors yeah. Service, for example, and working really in Outback Australia, which mm. uh, is hard for a lot of us, even if we are Australians, to imagine just yeah. what, a, what a tough job that can be. Tell us about how that came about. Yes, yeah, that's, that's another interesting question because... Um, well, I was born in Victoria, and my first home was under next door to Essendon Airport. And I used to look at the aeroplanes fly by, and before I even heard, saw a piano, and wished to be in an aeroplane. So <laughs> it was it was a second passion. So um, when when music became um, not so much of a reality, I just turned to flying, um, 
and wholeheartedly put my uh, energy into it. Um, basically closed the piano lid um, and pursued aviation. And I did, I did some wonderful things. I was the outback, the outback mailman for uh, two or three years. And that's an important job because delivering the mail once a week to, a, to stations, we, I was the only person they saw. Yeah, I think for us, and the, a lot of Australians couldn't really understand yeah, that, just how crucial that is. It, is, yes, it yeah. was, and they used to meet me at the airports and give me a, a, a orange juice or have a chat. And, yes. And it was when I became friends with many of the station owners and sort of delivered the news a little bit to them. And Because um, back then, don't forget, it was uh, pre-telephone. You know, yes. It was all radio telephone back then, so it was, it, they were isolated people. Um, and for there, I did some time with the Flying Doctor, which is also a vital organisation, um, and then progressed into the airlines. Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah. so quite a lot of miles out there and uh, covered and, and probably one or two very, very interesting or more than one or two interesting characters yeah. living in those isolated yeah. parts of Australia. Yeah. It's, it's a wonderful life for a young man. It was. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. So tell us about how you've been able to maintain your practice and your 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 musical interests over the years. What, how's that developed as, as your other career took off? You've still been able to, I mean, practising. I mean, I know there's a couple of jurors here that I've had in, in, in interviews in the past and a couple of them said how much they hate practising, but quite a few of them said they love it, absolutely love it. What about yourself? Practising is tough. <laughs> it really <laughs> is. But um, I, I'm always drawn to it. So it, it didn't, it's never been a chore for me. And as I said um, if I wasn't playing the piano, because I, I lived in places where there were no piano, oh, so yeah. don't forget, I, when I said the outback in the uh, in the late seventies, they didn't have piano shops or pianos, and none of the schools had pianos, none of the stations certainly had piano, so there was nothing available to play. So I didn't play, but I often thought about it, mm. and I'd listen to it. And my mother would send me um, the Sipka recordings, as it was then, the Sydney International Piano Competition, known as Sipka back then. Uh, and I used to watch them until the tape ran out and all the tape <laughs> wore out. You know, and it kept me into, into the music. Um, so it was about um, 30 years of, of continuous flying uh, and continual employment in the aviation business that my wife said to me, it's, it's probably time you revisited the piano. Mm. <laughs> uh, and, and so I did. So I, 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 bought a, I bought a piano and I just started to play it a little bit of practice. Um, and I've got to tell you, as I said, practice is tough. I got back aches and arm aches and finger aches and headaches from the sound of it all. And um, but as time went by, I sort of developed this te technique. Um, and I, I, suppose, I suppose I fully subscribe to the saying "a little and often," because mm. I played a little and often, mm -hmm. and just got a little better every single day. Oh, isn't that lovely? It's, it's quite a good story, yeah, yeah. Would you encourage other people sort of that were, shall we say, post 30, that were thinking about starting to play again? Yes, look, it's, um, it's the most wonderful thing to be, able to, to be able to express yourself and perhaps even let off a little steam on the piano rather than on your neighbour or, mm. or, so I used to, it's, Therapeutic and wonderful for you. I think the mental health's become, uh, and rightly so, um, a, a, a off-discussed topic. And mm. I think music is probably one of the best things you can do to just improve your, your state of mind. And playing music, of course, is that on steroids. Mm. So it, it was. It was. It's a wonderful thing. It's been a wonderful thing for me to develop music, become better. And as I said, the performance uh, yesterday. Um, that was about a year's preparation for me. Mm. I think I played for 12 minutes and it took me 12 months <laughs> to, to, get, to get it good enough to, to present to the public. How wonderful. It was that dedication. Yeah, it was, good on it, you. It was really. almost every single day. Yes. I'd go to the piano and I'd play part of huh. part of what I was going to play. I knew, I knew had my, I had it in my mind what I, going, what I was going to play and I'm pretty sure it was... It could have been 13 or 14, but it was a long time and I did it every single day to a point where I was, had the confidence to then play in front of people because I don't play in front of people very often. Mm. I have a wonderful practice environment because I live in the rainforest. You do, Montville. Yeah, yes, and, yes, and it's, yes. it's very peaceful and quiet 
um, but there's no audience for me and um, uh, no distractions. So when I play, it's it's the perfect environment. So you don't hit, there's no coughing or there's no there's no mobile phones going off when they shouldn't. There's no all these things that every performer has to endure and try and concentrate at the same time. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't witness that when I practice. So in fact, I actually had my wife when I was in the last two weeks sit there and just bang chairs while I was playing, <laughs> just just to try just to try and simulate what I might have to. Uh, endure or not endure, but it's very unusual experience. request, isn't it? Please yeah. bang chairs while I'm playing the piano. She wasn't. She, look, she's a very tidy girl, and she, she, she wasn't very good at it. So. <laughs> so. But you, let's talk a little bit a bit more about family life because you actually have a professional musician in the family now. Your son's a cellist and I, I studying in Dusseldorf in Germany. Yeah, Sam, Sam, Sam Lucas, my son, is um, like he's a very high achieving young man. He mm. has always. Uh, been interested in music. He's always been a natural performer, which is a wonderful thing. Um, uh, he studies in Dusseldorf with uh, with Peter Wispelway, you know, one of the finest cellists ever to live, I think. Dutch cellist, isn't he? Yes, he absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yes. And um, he, he recently um, achieved his dream of playing in the, the Tchaikovsky uh, International Cello Competition in St. Petersburg. Goodness me. Uh, which, which is a wonderful thing for him to have done, especially this year when it was a very awkward thing to do. It was. It yeah. was, yeah. How lovely. And what about you and your son? Do you perform together sometimes or do you play together? Oh, no. Play through some chamber music? No. Well, I, no. well those days are gone. He, he, I, did, I have had the experience of playing with him and it, I'm not, I don't have his abilities. No, and, but probably earlier on, playing I, 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 music I, I, together. He, and... He's very critical. And he, okay. if, I, if I made a mistake, which I was prone to, <laughs> um, he'd often ask me, what were you doing? <laughs> so I, I thought it was better to get... Um, to get um, more reliable musicians to play with him. Can I put it that way? I'm not, mm. yeah, so, yeah. Oh, that's, that's understandable, but yeah. it, that might change again, you'll see. As the years go on, you'll probably be, have very special memories about playing together with his dad, and that'll happen again, I'm well, sure. Well, I did help him practice, but I also like watching him play. So yeah. if I play with him, I can't watch him play. Mm. So sometimes the, the thrill for me is to actually watch him play and let someone else do the hard work. Were you involved in his lessons? Did you go to his lessons and uh, listen in? Or? Okay, I, I often listen in simply because we live at Montville and his lesson was two hours drive. And it was a, <laughs> and it was, it was a Wednesday. And I, used to, I grew to hate Wednesdays because we'd have to, I'd pick him Long up from drive. school, yeah. drive for two hours to west of Brisbane. Uh-huh. He'd do a two hour lesson. He'd often go for an orchestra rehearsal afterwards and I'd drive back and we'd get home at midnight. Yeah. And yeah. it was a day after him. But it was a it was a pilgrimage for me. Yeah, it was, and of course, a dedication on your behalf. You knowing the value of music, yeah. and what, probably feeling pretty happy that he was prepared to do it. But yes. this is life in regional Australia, isn't it? We yeah. don't always have access to good music teachers, no, and uh, let alone concerts and all the rest yes, of it. Yes, that's right. What about Montville now? When do you do, do you sometimes have some people around and play little concerts for them and things? Yeah, when I left uh, when I left aviation, um, I decided to. Uh, develop what's called Lucas Parklands. So Lucas Parklands is my home. Um, and it was always my ambition uh, to live in a park. Ah. So the name came, the name came, Lucas Parklands is the name of the property I own. It was simply because I've always been a lover of lovely landscape mm. and and beautiful geography. And so my wife and I moved there with the sole intent of creating a garden to live in. Oh, wow. Set in the rainforest. So we call it Lucas Parklands. However, um, the opportunity came to develop a music uh, performance space. So we ended up doing that first. And now we're attending to the garden. Mm. So, so yeah, so. Well, I'm sure the plants grow much better because they're getting lots of lovely music. I, I, I think do, there's, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. there's really something in that. I, I live a privileged life, yeah. What a lovely, lovely thing. And of course, music, I hope, may, remains a very important part of that privileged life of yours, Ian. Thank you so much for talking to me here at the Sydney International Piano Competition 2023. Ian Lucas, of course, winner of the Piano Lovers Competition in 2020 and 2022. And keep playing. My pleasure. Very important. Yes. It is. Yes. Thanks, Ian. Thank you.